Today's video is brought to you by Local Line, which is an incredible CRM farming software that I absolutely love and a lot of growers I know are using it. I did a video not too long ago that was sort of a full comprehensive review of that. You can click up in the top right of the screen if you want to check that out. And if you want more information about them, there'll be a link in the show notes just down below the, the information on this video if you want to check them out. They've got some great offers on there to get you set up and a free trial that you can start using it right away. So check it out if you want to learn more. In today's video, I want to talk about my greenhouse and some of the things that I've changed in here. As of today, November 19th, this greenhouse is four years old. I started building this in mid-October of 2015 and we wrapped up the most of it you know we still had a lot to do at the end the inside but we wrapped up all the outside framing and sealing it up on november 19th 2015 and uh i'm actually gonna leave if you click up in the where it'll be the top right corner i'll link to the time lapse video of us building this which is four years today uh, you can check that out and um so i i'll talk about some of the features of this greenhouse but mostly i'll talk about kind of what's different about it now than when I started. So some basic features of this greenhouse. This is what's referred to as a passive solar greenhouse, but it's not 100% passive. I do have some active heat in here. I've got a six kilowatt heater up there that I still run. And I've got double layer poly with a blower. I'll talk about that in a bit because there's some things that I've actually changed on that recently. And um, there is a climate battery underneath here. And I've talked about all these things in previous videos, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on them, but there is a climate battery here, which works with a, there's a tube up here that's connected to a thermostat that pushes air underground. And there are big O pipes that are underneath my feet here inside the foundation, which is insulated on the outside. And the reason it's insulated on the outside, most, most foundations on homes will put the insulation on the inside of the foundation. The reason the insulation's on the outside of the foundation here, being you know outside of the building, is that it that makes the concrete act as a thermal mass as well as the ground that we pump the hot air under. So that all acts as a thermal mass and it keeps a sort of radiant warmth in here. Now, for the most part, especially in the fall months, I don't heat this greenhouse at all unless I'm in here working. And so today I got to do a webinar for microgreens and, um, and I'm going to, uh, I'm just doing other work in here editing video. So I want it to be a bit warm, but on a sunny day, and it's not a sunny day today, but on a sunny day, it'll be, she, you know, it still gets like up to 40 in here, but I've actually installed some new things that help with that. Uh, well, recently it hasn't gone past 25 Celsius, which is just about, let's call it 78 Fahrenheit. So it stays fairly warm in here. And this climate battery keeps it just kind of regulated and, and overall warm. It's not necessarily going to produce a lot of heat, but it will keep it warm. So even on a day that's below freezing, like it is right now outside, without any heat, it'll still be fairly warm in here. Probably about 10 degrees Celsius which is, I got to look at my thermostat, which is around 50 Fahrenheit. That's actually exactly 50 Fahrenheit. But if I want to get it warm, I either need a sunny day or I turn on the heat. So it's sort of a hybrid system. So it's orientated to the south. I've got uh, the climate battery, which adds a lot. The walls are double stud. So the back wall and the roof here are very thick and they're insulated really well. You can see now, like I've got these uh, skylights I've put in here, for, mostly for ventilation. And you can see that's 18 inches thick. The, the insulation, the, the wall, the roof is, is, is very well insulated. So it's, it's an efficient building. Part of that efficiency comes from the fact that I have a double layer poly system on this greenhouse, which essentially starts with this little unit, which is just a, is a blower. And these are very common on greenhouses. It sucks air 
and then it pushes it between two layers of poly. So if we go outside here for a second, if we go outside here for a second, you can see there's sort of a bulge to the plastic and that's because that blower is pushing that air in between. So that makes it a lot more efficient. It gives me about a, it gives me an R value of about five, R five. So I could do uh, polycarbonate for this, and I didn't because it was going to cost eight thousand dollars. I did this; it cost about three hundred. Uh, I think that's what it was, somewhere in there. Call it three to five hundred dollars Canadian, uh, including the blower. The blower is two hundred dollars Canadian, and uh, the plastic, you know, makes up the rest of it. Two two types of plastic. So that's that gives it a good a good insulation and um, you know the garden beds are, are a new thing you know I used to just have hundreds and hundreds of flats of microgreens between all these posts here and here and here I had shelving I had three layers of shelving and so that allowed me to put tons of microgreens I also had a whole other shelf along here for microgreens um, this whole area here was only two feet wide before the shelf and then the other shelf. So we really stacked up the production in here. And the cool thing about this greenhouse is when I built it, I was farming full time and really cranking production on microgreens. So this greenhouse paid itself off in really not even half a year because of the amount of microgreens production I could get. And you know, back then my context was one, I wanted a microgreen space that I could really crank up winter production, keep one of my guys working full time, and another, have a really secure place for greenhouse nursery starts. When I, you know, over the course of my urban farming career, the nursery was always something that was kind of dicey. And it's hard to have a nursery when you, when you don't own land. I own this place now, but I didn't back then. And I, I, I was even just renting before I built this. I was renting this place to live, this home. Uh, and I never really had a good permanent nursery. And that's a really important part of, a, of the infrastructure of a farm. And so it was a real weak point on the farm. So that was a big motivation to building this. You know, at that point, I'd taken over a mortgage at this, at this property. And so I could, you know, invest in something like this. It cost me $30,000 Canadian at the time. If I had to do it again, I could probably do it for half of that, just, just by cutting some corners and not doing unnecessarily, like this is all manufactured lumber, uh, which is really expensive, pointless, really. Um, steel would have been cheaper uh, and better. But I like how I can hang a lot of stuff off this, so maybe in the end, I don't regret it. But, um, but anyways, my context has changed on here. Now I have all these raised beds, and that kind of leads me to another thing i uh, mention is, I didn't put a permanent flooring down when I started this and I'm kind of glad that I did it that way because if I would have poured concrete in here, which was an option, which I was really considering, I would have kind of shot myself in the foot when I wanted to take a break from farming and change my context to have something like this. So I'm glad that I had pavers down because then I could move things around and yeah, I've moved these pavers a few times, which has, you know, been a lot of backbreaking work but it's allowed me to be flexible with how I have this greenhouse set up. And you know, when you're young and you're kind of figuring things out, you don't necessarily know what your context is gonna be, you know, and, and, and some other people that might be different. You might already be well into um, your life and you have a family and you kind of know your context. So when you build a greenhouse like this, maybe you might do things permanently and that's okay. It just depends on, on where you're coming from. Um, so some things that I've changed in recent years is one, we kind of looked at the skylights. I put those in this summer and they're amazing. They're really, really amazing. I did three of them. They cost me, it cost about 2000 bucks to do all that, but I have a little thing that opens them and I just open them manually. And what I do in the summer now is I open like, so basically from June until mid September, I just roll the poly up on the front. I, I kill the blower. There's no need to run the blower. Uh, and then I, I roll up the poly on the front and then I open those up and the greenhouse stays at a pretty reasonable temperature. It's, it's pretty nice because before it got a little bit too hot. Um, when I was farming in here with microgreens, I would actually just put shade cloth over, which helped a bit but the ventilation has helped significantly more. Sometimes, I think there was a month in August where I actually did have 
the shade cloth on here as well as it being fully ventilated and that seemed to work uh, just fine and dandy. So those are new, the, the skylights. Another thing that I did that was new was, well, I mean, I, talk, I mentioned the raised beds. I put all of those in. Uh, they're all built with fur, except this top plank here is a cedar. But these are built with full dimensional 2x10 uh, fur. It's expensive wood, but it really lasts a long time, especially in the Okanagan, which is a very uh, dry climate. It's a high desert here. So cedar isn't really a good wood to use to touch soil because it just, it just, it uh, it breaks down too quick because it's so dry. But cedar is a good wood if you're in a wet climate. But we're not in a wet climate here, so I, that's why I chose to use fur. Um, the other thing I did recently was there's there's sort of a debate with a lot of um, market gardeners out there on whether to for the air that goes into the um, that goes into the blower whether to suck that air from the inside or whether to suck it from the outside. The argument for sucking it from the inside, at least how I understand it, is uh, commonly, this is what it was for me, is that I'm sucking warm air in there. That way the air that's be here is warmer. That way it's warmer to the touch and then that way you don't get condensation building up on it. And that's worked pretty well. The argument for putting it outside is that when you pu pull it from outside you don't get as much condensation in between the layers thus you get a little bit less light diffusion um, and that's and that's pretty much it and so what I've done is I tried something different entirely is because this is a, a climate battery I'm actually sucking the air now from the exhaust from the climate battery meaning that I'm kind of getting the best of both worlds because I'm getting a warmer air, which means this is warm to the touch, even though it's below freezing outside. And um, I'm getting less condensation because the air that comes up from the ground has gone through a phase change. So that's how these climate, that's a, it's a big element of how, what these climate batteries do is that when it sucks air from the, uh, from the top as it accumulates and then it goes underground as that warm air touches a cooler ground the condensation sticks to the ground and the air comes up drier so I'm liking what I've, I'm seeing so far and I kind of wish I would have done it a long time ago but it seems to be working pretty well another thing I changed in uh, I think we did this this summer is I cut a door in the center and I can't believe I didn't do that before. I can't believe all the years that I had this thing running, I'd come from my house and I'd be going to either side of the greenhouse to come in, which just meant so many more trips back and forth. Because I walk from my house to this greenhouse, geez, you know, when I was farming in here, it might have been 50 times a day or more. Now it might be 20. But by just cutting a door in the middle and then I got a straight shot to my back door, is amazing it's also really nice in the winter because this is a covered area that we have between our home and the greenhouse and so that way like even in the winter if it's minus 20 celsius outside i can zip out here in bare feet really quickly and be in the nice warm greenhouse and it's nice too because my daughter can can do the same she'll just come back and forth and come and check on me uh when she wants to i'm actually just going to turn the lights on in here because it's getting dark it's only it's already quarter after four and it's getting dark. So I'm just going to flip on the lights in the greenhouse here for a second. Give me a bit more light. There we go. And I'm going to talk about some of the plants that I have going on here. So this is kind of just a home garden, you know, like uh, I, I'm doing a lot of homesteading now. And um, we did a lot of storage crops this year. We, well, I still have my urban plot that's two blocks away. And I use, I, I farm that with uh, Roger and Alain, who uh, Roger's been in a number of my videos. And uh, we grow a lot of storage crops there. So we had a lot of garlic and onions and potatoes there. So we've got lots of storage crops in my root cellar and my downstairs fridge and freezer. And um, I have a lot in the gardens here. I won't do a full garden tour now. I've, I've done that this year. You, you can check those out in other videos. But what we have in here is most of what I eat fresh. Um, mind you, I still have kale outside. I still have spinach outside. I still have parsley. 
uh, some red Russian kale. I still have beets outside. I still have carrots outside in the ground covered in low tunnels. I still have a lot of stuff outside that will actually do fine over winter. And I've talked about those in, in, in many previous videos before. But in here I've got tropicals, I've got lemons, I've got uh, Meyer lemons, I've got some uh, uh, key limes, I've got some funky ones, like this is a finger lime, it hasn't fruited yet. Uh, various different types of lemons. I've got a fig tree that's actually been producing fruit all year. My lemons haven't done that well, but they're starting to fruit again, so that's a good sign. But we got a fig tree in here, and uh, I got some new cannabis. I, this light will kick on any minute. This is a really cool LED light from a company called Active Grow. They sent this to me to try it out, and I love it. These guys, these are auto flowering varieties, so this light just kicks on kind of on the shoulders of the day. It comes on about, because I want to give these puppies 18 hours of light, because they're just a short cycle plant. Like they're, they're starting to flower right now. But um, this light kicks on at four in the morning and then it turns off at about, I think 9 a.m. And then it kicks on, it'll probably come on while I'm shooting this video. Um, so I've got stuff in there. I've tried some new stuff too. Like, oh, there we go. <laughs> it just comes on. Um, I've tried some interplanting on these. And so I'm growing these in pots. I've, and I'm glad I did that because then they're easy to move around if I need to. And I didn't want to dedicate any garden bed real estate to them because I've got lots of veggies in the garden. I've got peas right now. They're flowering. Um, and, I, and I actually had this when I first started these guys. I had them against the back wall. And I'm glad that I moved them here because I'm getting more use of this light. It's actually lighting some of these cucumbers. Like I'm still picking a cucumber like this a day, every day. This is late, Oct late November. And I'm still picking a big cuke like this every single day. And you'll see they're, they're hanging all over the place in here. But the cool thing about this light is it's also lighting these crops. Like this lettuce, you can see, is a lot darker green than this lettuce. So I might actually just pull this stuff out. Because when lettuce doesn't get a lot of light, I've often found that's a problem with um, the Okanagan Valley here in my, my bioregion. That it's hard to do lettuce in the winter time even if it's kind of warm because we just have so many cloudy days whereas people like on the northeastern seaboard in the united states even places like quebec and ontario and canada can do a lot better winter crops uh, particularly greens even though it's way colder but they get way more sunny days and so their greenhouses actually are more productive than ours are and so i've always found that's been, that's a bit of a challenge with some leafy green crops like this spinach is pathetic here um that's one thing i've learned too like some crops are just better outside like spinach my spinach crop in my beds out there is way better than what i've done in here and it's colder out there and everything but it's more it's more of what it likes out there than it is in here like spinach doesn't really like it to be that warm it likes a bit of cold and so, um, mind you, the stuff in the pots with the, the cannabis plants is doing pretty good. But some things, again, are just, are just kind of better outside. Lettuce is, it seems to be good in here if you've got some artificial light to supplement it. But, you know, even this stuff I, isn't all that great. I might just pull all this, this lettuce out and put some other stuff in here. But my cukes are just crushing it. Like, I've got lots planted. I've got them, uh, she might, I got some arugula here. It's doing pretty good. Um... But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I have eighteen cucumber plants in this greenhouse. And I'm really glad that I did that many because as many of you guys know, things just slow down when you get into this time of year. There's just a lot less daylight hours. And, um, you know, I can keep it kind of, I can keep it fairly warm in here, but it's really the daylight hours that makes the difference. And so I've, I'm glad that I've got a lot of plants because that means I have, they can just sit there, right? Like the beauty of this time of year, it's not like summertime where if you leave the, the cucumber on the vine too long, it gets yellow and the seeds ripen and it's not really that edible. This way, they're all kind of growing slow, but I've just got lots that I can draw from. Like, you know, like I've got cukes hanging here, and I just, I've just run strings all along this, um, all this manufactured lumber. Uh, LVL, I think they call this stuff. It's actually the, the thing that I 
like about these LVLs is it's super strong. You can, you can hang a car off this, it's so strong. And of course, what would you need to? Uh, but I do like how I've been able to just put strings and trellising everywhere in here. If, I, if this was steel, um, I could do it, but it would, be, it would be different. And the steel would also be cold and that might also affect the plants as well. Uh, LVLs are, are different than normal lumber too because they don't harbor bacteria. Like a lot of wood, if you have a lot of wood in a greenhouse, it can actually cause a lot of problems. Uh, but in this case, it hasn't. And I also painted it white too with an outdoor paint to, to further prevent any bacteria from becoming a problem. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's been great. And like I said, I'm picking a cucumber this size every single day. Like you can, you can just see, I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can see at least 10 cucumbers that size right now that I've got. And the, like this one, let's say this one here, might not be big enough to eat right now, but in two weeks it will be no problem. So it's been great because of that. And I'm hoping that my tropical fruit um, starts to pick up in here too. If not, I think next year I'm gonna start pulling some things out of here and, uh, and just change things around. Maybe try some different types of tropical fruit. I wish I had some mandarin origins in here or some kumquats, things that, that fruit a little, a little bit easier. And um, yeah, that's more or less it. I mean, we I've got a lot of pots in here right now. Like my wife likes to keep uh, sort of a potted herb garden on our back deck in the uh, in the summer or the spring, summer and early fall. And then we kind of bring everything back in here in the winter so that it just survives. Like I've got lemongrass here and uh, you know, I've actually got a killer combo. If, you, if you're into Thai food, my lemongrass with my kefir lime leaves are, that's like, crucial for making um, Thai curries. So that's, I love those two as a combination. I definitely wouldn't get rid of the kefir lime. Um, but uh, going forward, you know, I think what I'll do is just start to put more plants in here that are appropriate. And maybe I don't need to plant as much. Like I kind of went overboard with planting a lot of lettuce and spinach and all that. Probably not that necessary. Um, I also really enjoy winter salads. Like I, I grew a lot of cabbage in the back garden here. This year I grew 120 pounds of cabbage in one of these, uh, I'll show you real quick, in one of these beds. I had a lot of these interplanted with cannabis too actually. They're all gone now but um, I've got some of my winter stuff. This entire bed was cabbage interplanted with basil uh, except for this Swiss chard area and I did a video on that actually. Um, but you know, I love winter salads like cabbage, like diced cabbage, shredded carrots and beets. I still have beets in the garden. And then sometimes I'll put pea shoots and sunflower shoots that I'm, that I can easily grow in the greenhouse with it. And that's a great salad. I don't necessarily need to eat lettuce or things that are more of like a summer salad type thing. I'm totally happy with, with what's seasonal. So probably going forward, I might just focus more on that and not really try to worry about you know getting all these these things that are pushing the season though it is working well with the led over there the, that lettuce is doing very well and it's a nice dark green and this is my ginger it's kind of like wintering over you know it's not growing much but it's certainly alive and it's coming along i'm hoping that it just kind of picks up and uh starts to give me some actual roots to eat in uh, the summer next year. But yeah, that's about it. That's my, my winter greenhouse. Um, I'll link in this video, you'll probably see um, little cards popping up because uh, I've done a lot of videos on this greenhouse and the context has changed a lot over the years. So I'll link to some of those videos and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Subscribe to the channel and join me for, I'm doing, I've been doing YouTube live sessions every Thursday for quite a while now. And I'm doing them earlier now, which I actually like. So I'm going to, this Thursday, I'm going to do it at one o'clock. You can join me there and I'll see you then. See you in the next video.